Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. Let's go, to another of Sananda's letters. I hope you are following along and enjoying what has been said here about the letters. But I say again to each one of you, don't read the letters or listen and let it go. This is a study path. I would suggest that each of you buy a notebook and take one month as a study period for each of the letters. It would be interesting for you to read and write down the most important points, those that you were really touched by, that caught your attention. Very good. From there, as Sananda himself recommends, in the letters, later on, start meditating, thinking about what was read, thinking about what was said. Before starting the meditation, ask Sananda to connect with you. No, this is not absurd, it is not a lack of respect, as many people think. Remember the Christic energy of Sananda is in the heart of each of you. So as you begin the meditation, ask him to connect with you, and this spark of him in your hearts will expand, increase, and you will be able, many of you even to see, what is being said. Give it a try, these letters are powerful, my brothers. Very powerful. And you have to extract the most from them that they have to offer you. These letters are not just words. If you connect deeply to this moment, connect to Sananda, you will have a much greater understanding of what is said. So this is a suggestion, that you meditate a little bit every day, about a sentence, a paragraph, that was said. If the meditation didn't bring you anything that day, repeat it the next day, hence the period of one month. If you happen to be able to understand the entire charter in a shorter period of time, there is no problem, go ahead. This is just a suggestion. If you can't meditate daily, no problem, meditate for as long as you can. If it lasts more than a month, that's okay, take as long as you need. But understand, feel, perceive, each of the letters. Don't get carried away by immediacy, don't get carried away by the speed of your daily life. You have to stop, think, analyze. This letter that I am going to comment on today is perhaps one of the most difficult to understand, as it brings all aspects of creation, of everything that was revealed to Sananda while he was in the desert. This is a passage that, for anyone who has read the religious book, can see how much it has been distorted. Sananda had no contact with any evil being that tempted him, yes, he had contact with the very essence of his being. But he came back from there saying so many things contrary to the world at that time, that someone had to explain it. And the explanation found was this, he was tempted by evil. So notice how much everything was changed, how much this religious book that you follow, that many follow to the letter, has nothing to do with what was said by Sananda. And he talks about this in letter number 5. That his disciples had to adapt a lot of things he said to the world they lived in, otherwise they would seem crazy. So notice a parallel, my brothers. Today, many call you crazy. But Sananda's word has spread, and you today are not just twelve, you are many, you are millions. So is it widespread madness? Are we brainwashing you? And everything you see, everything you feel, the changes you have had in your lives? That although many think it was for the worse, the changes that made you evolve. So realize that the process has grown, that everything that Sananda tried to do 2000 years ago is now having an echo. You are understanding every word he is saying, because your hearts are ready, you are going through a growth process. So you understand what is written there. Much of what he has already said, I have been repeating here for a long time. So you don't have any more surprises, you just corroborate everything I had already said. And this is important, it is very important because these letters were not written by me, nor by this person speaking to you, these letters were written by another channeler, who reproduced Sananda's consciousness. And if I say the same thing that is written there, it's good, because I believe that in this way, any type of doubt that could be seen in relation to what happens on this channel disappears, as many say, that it's not me, that this is all a lie, that you are listening to the devil, not me that angels do not speak, that archangels don't talk the way I do. Pure limiting beliefs. Pure limiting beliefs. 
so it's good, it's good for you to see, that what is being said here was written elsewhere, which I never commented on here, and I say the same thing. Then many may think, ah, but she could have gone to the letters and been talking. It would be a possibility. But do I speak here in the same way as Sananda? Do I reproduce exactly what Sananda says, or do I say it in another way? So, my brothers, there will always be doubts, there will always be those who question, who are always on the fence, who believe but don't believe much. In the same way, those who are reading the letters, and do not really believe in what is written there, because that is not what was taught, that is not what was learned. So you still have a certain fear of what you are reading, in the same way as what was said here. So to those I just have to say the following, continue the journey, don't give up because you still have a long way to go. So let's go, let's talk about card number 5. The key point of this card is creation, it is what he calls universal consciousness, it's what he calls the source of being. I'm not going to go into everything he said in depth. I'm going to explain it in general terms. What he says, what he realized, in those days in the desert, is that every little particle, every little molecule has a consciousness, which makes it an intelligent being. It doesn't matter your size. And that molecule, it will unite with similar ones, to form a small cell, and this small cell will form something bigger, an organ, a body, a stone, a planet no matter how far it goes. So what is the moral of this statement? I have been asked who God is, who is our Father or Mother God. And I have already answered that He is pure consciousness, He is pure love, omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. What do I mean by this? That He knows everything that happens in the universe. I'm going to expand a little more on everything that happens in the universes. Then you, with the Tersarum mind that you have, you keep imagining, a being thinking about all this. How can you? No, my brothers, I never said that he was a being, he is a consciousness, it's just that you can't translate what the word consciousness is, to what we understand it to be. You think about consciousness, that's what you have in your mind, but that's not it. It's an intelligence. And as everything in the universe is the result of this consciousness, then everything in the universe is a piece of it. So he knows everything that happens, because there is a piece of him at each point. Each of you is a piece of it. Understand, he doesn't need to stay. Let's make an analogy. I believe that many of you have already seen on your television, or in your school books, that from one cell becomes two, these two multiply and become four, from four they multiply and become eight from 8 they multiply and become 16, and so on. So it's not that this consciousness, the consciousness of our Father or Mother God, keeps dividing itself all the time, the great consciousness, no, it is multiplied. It is a great organism that multiplies in you, when you generate new beings. These new beings already contain that consciousness, every cell that is there is a piece of the consciousness of our Father or Mother God. It's as if they were. Once again I'm going to make an analogy, you have arms, legs, eyes, mouth, nose, ears, each of these organs, these parts of your body has a function. They were given a role. So every cell in every part of your body has a function. It's like a big battalion, in which some will take care of the clothes, others will take care of the food, others will take care of keeping the barracks clean, others will take care of keeping the weapons clean each one has its function. And no one stopped being human because of it. Everyone is human, but each one has a role. So it is as if each cell comes with a consciousness, which is the divine consciousness, which makes them multiply and expand, expand the consciousness of our greater being. Just a parenthesis, when I say being bigger, I'm not referring to a being with shape, it's just a way of speaking. And beyond this consciousness, the cell has a function, that molecule has a function. It is as if certain points of that great consciousness had a function. So each point of consciousness has particles, which have that function. And so was the creation, and it has only been multiplying over time. I can't say that the great consciousness, our father or mother God, 
doesn't create new things, doesn't generate new molecules with new functions, why not? The universe is expanding, so this keeps happening all the time. Today, you understand these particles that your scientists previously called protons, neutrons, and electrons, you today understand nanoparticles, and increasingly, you are discovering smaller particles. And then we started talking about quantum physics, because this size became very small, and each time you will discover more. So when we say that you receive what you emanate, let's try to explain this phrase. Particles, the smallest particles, have consciousness and have function. Very good. But when you think, you have produced a thought, that thought produced came from a cell in your brain, so it's as if you created a particle, with a new function. What function? The one you just thought of. No, don't keep your mouth open, asking yourself, can I give a function to a particle? Yes, you can. Think about this, where do you come from? What is the origin of each particle that makes up each molecule, which makes up each cell in your body? Where does she come from? From the great consciousness of our father or mother God, who has all this power. And that, by similarity, you have the same power, only you were induced to use that power in another way. So let's continue the reasoning. You think, then you produce a particle, and this particle is associated with what you thought. So let's go. You woke up one day happy, you're radiant, happy with life, and you think, ah, Today I'm going to have a wonderful day. Very well, you have created a whole structure, an event that will be your wonderful day, which is made up of, a lot of joy, balance, good news, good company, total balance of your being, which will bring you a lot of happiness. So you, when you said those words, quickly imagined all of this. So those particles that you created with your thoughts are imbued with this function, of bringing this positive day to you. But you didn't generate just one particle, when you think, you generate millions of particles, what we call thought forms. It is as if you generate a large cloud above your heads. With all these particles, containing your thought. When you finish thinking, this cloud detaches from your mind, and moves on, like a soap bubble, but it doesn't burst, it's quite compact, it's strong and firm. Very good and she wanders around the universe. Then there is another person on the other side of the planet, who also had the same thought, today I will have a glorious, wonderful day. It generated her thought form, I won't say exactly the same as hers, but with the same purpose, with the same feeling of love, joy, balance, and peace. Then similar thought forms attract each other. So, as incredible as it may seem, even though the other thought form is on the other side of the planet, they attract each other. And then they quickly navigate until they meet, and form a slightly larger bubble. And then, this will be repeated across the planet, this bubble will only increase. And then what happens, my brothers? Let's do an analogy in reverse. You wake up that day attacked, complaining about everything, fighting with everyone, blaspheming life saying a lot of things that you shouldn't, immense, negative thought forms. And then there is another, on the other side of the planet, who also woke up attacked, and these thought forms will come together. Very good. Let's imagine how many thought forms there are around your planet today. How big has this been since the first human set foot here on this planet? I don't need to tell you that you can't even imagine how big it is. But let's continue the story it's not over yet. Here you are only in the emanating phase, you are emanating. Very good. And how does this come back? So let's go. You have an aura, made up of N bodies in addition to the physical. So as you emanate, these positive particles of thought forms, and this is not just expanded into the universe, it is expanded into your aura. So if you are a person who is always happy with life, you are that person who understands the problems they have, who suffers, but accepts suffering as a lesson, etc., etc., your aura absorbs these particles too. So they have the function of keeping your aura bright, to maintain your positive aura. In the same way, 
let's say the opposite, you have that terrible habit of complaining about everything, fighting, yelling, your aura absorbs it all, and demonstrates exactly what you created. So let's go, you already know how to emanate and how this is represented in your body, in the same way as thought forms, they go into space, let's say it like this. All the feelings you emanate go into your aura and accumulate. Very good. We continue in the emanation phase. Now how do you attract what you emanate? What did I say just now? That you create small bubbles of thought form, which, by attraction, will unite with an immense bubble, which was created a long time ago. So in the same way, your aura attracts that immense bubble of joy, as you are emanating joy, and there, that thought form, that great cloud of thought form of joy, of love, prosperity, abundance, comes close from you, and as you are emanating that all the time, you keep exchanging with that great egregore. Oh! I have already changed my name, I have become an egregore, of positive light, which gives you back everything that is positive, you start to attract, what? Positive particles that are around you. It's as if that great egregore of joy sent you a bunch of particles, with no function yet, and you start to attract these particles. Then in the middle of your day, you say, Wow, I wish I was far away, in nature, resting. One of those particles, absorbs your thought, and creates this function and joins with others, for what? To attract this event to you. This is where many say, Well, I ask, I ask. It happens, but it takes a while to happen. Think my brothers, until you have enough particles, with that function of creating that moment in your life, it takes time, it's not that simple. But they are being created, and they are reproducing, as if they were cells, generating what you want. And then there will come a day, when it is so consistent, so big, so ready, that the moment happens. And then you think, hey, but my God, this is a miracle, how did this happen? Because one day you emanated that, your desire was strong enough that it attracted positive particles so that they began to create this moment for you. Then realize that you emanated and you received back. I'm not saying here that things are that simple, of course they aren't, there are many factors. But this is the explanation of the phrase, everything you emanate, you receive back. Because each particle has consciousness, it has the consciousness that came from you, and your consciousness from your cell, from that molecule that makes it up, from the particle that makes it up, comes from where? From our father or mother God. So when Sananda says that you have the power, that you can do anything, the power is there, in your hands. This is not magic, this is not magic. And then let's talk about the other side, in which Sananda always comments, that everything that is happening in your world was created by you. Do you now understand the meaning of this sentence? You created thought forms, out of fear, mostly out of fear. The thought form of fear takes over almost everything on your planet, because you all emanate this, fear. And then they realize how bad things happen so quickly, because they are all attracting each other. I already explained this here a while ago, when an accident happens in a place, it quickly proliferates, then you say what a coincidence, it happened here, it happened there, why? Because you begin to create the thought form of fear in relation to that event, and it begins to multiply. And then there is another person in another place, who thought the same thing, and these thought forms attract each other and begin to multiply, and to happen in different places. So when I tell you, don't focus on other people's suffering, I'm not being bad, I'm not being cold, many people sometimes think, it seems that the Archangel has no heart. No, I'm just telling you, stop thinking about other people's suffering, or you will attract that suffering to more people. Do you now understand this? Come on, it'll give you an example of what's happening in your country right now. One place had heavy rain, it flooded, and the river overflowed, thousands of people lost their homes. Then in another city that also has a river, some people started, wow, what a horrible thing, imagine if it happened here in our city. And then someone on the side thought the same thing, the same thought form, 
fear attracting what? The same event. And then you start to see things replicating in various places. Gaia does not plan for this. You are attracting this. Yes, feel guilty, because you attract everything that happens to you, because you keep focusing on other people's suffering. This is not being bad, this is not being evil, this is not being insensitive, this is accepting that everything happens in the right place, at the right time, it can be the result of group thinking, as it can also be the result of decisions made by our father or mother God. So do you realize how powerful you are? I hope that every time I comment on these things here, you really stop to think about how much power you have in your hands. You have the same power of creation as our Father or Mother God. And then many will say, Ah, that's absurd, what do you mean? I'm telling you, you are particles of it. So if you are particles of it, you have all the power it has. Let's just have a proportion of the size he is, and the size you are. So you could say that his power is billions of times greater in strength, but you have the same power, according to your size. When a truck crashes, it causes much greater damage than a car when it crashes, and the event is the same, the crash. Both are capable of causing an accident, but they have different strengths. So this is your difference, for greater consciousness. Because, imagine if you had the strength to do something on a planetary level, just one of you? So we also have to be aware that there is this difference, but the power is there. What if you all came together? Let's say we could do a live broadcast, to every being on the planet, at the same time, and we asked each one of you, think about your planet, perfect, fully illuminated, without violence, without sickness without evil. What do you think would happen? If all of you, everyone, vibrated the same thing, emanated particles of love, what would happen? Can you imagine? You would suffocate all other egregors formed by thought forms, and you would evolve in the snap of a finger. Because you would have enough energy in your hearts to do so, because you created an egregor so large that it gives back to you in the same proportion. So when we say that a critical mass is needed to evolve the planet, do you understand now? Because you are emanating light, you are emanating thought forms, and these thought forms that you are emanating are creating a great egregore, but it needs to grow even more, we need to have more people emanating these same particles, so that this egregore grows and suffocates all the others. So my brothers, you think this is all nonsense, but it's not. You have millions of literatures that tell you, every day, think and it will happen, believe in what you want, dream and you will attract. Now. It's not just, oh, I want to have a new house. Very well, you sent a positive particle, but look at the feeling you put into that sentence, a feeling of disbelief, of discouragement. So what happens, you will create a very tiny, almost zero egregore, and I'm not going to say that it will never happen, but it will take so long, so long, that it will pass the time you've been on the planet. So, wanting is power. This sentence is perfect. Where there's a will there's a way. But you just have to know how to want it. That's what I tell you, there has to be feeling, there has to be will, there has to be kindness, of not wanting it just for yourself. The more complete the thought form you create, the more the return will be perfect, the more particles with the function you want will be returned to you, and that will actually happen. My brothers, this letter number 5, it is very complex. You will have to read it many times until you understand it perfectly. I summarized here in a very simplistic way, what Sananda said there, that you all have within you the source of being. So you have the same powers, you can do anything, you just need to believe in what you are creating. Ah, so if, for example, if I mentalize the same request, with the same intensity, every day, does this cause him to return more quickly? What do you think? If you are creating that thought form every day, then the next day you create the same thought form, it will, by attraction, join the first one you created. Then the next day you do it again, it will join those others. In other words, you are creating a large egregore with the same intention. 
So each time this egregore grows and meets the great egregores of positivity, you receive particles back, with the function of what you want. It's different from making a request today, then making the same request a week later, the intensity is no longer the same. If you talk every day, every moment, as if you were in that place you want, as if you were living that, this is increasingly stronger, and will certainly bring back what you want more quickly. Remember that I asked you to make a list of 10 wishes and put them in your notebook. What happened to that list? Everything that you think, that you speak, becomes thought forms, because speech is a wave, just like thought. When you write, it's another, let's say, another level, of energy generation, because there on that paper you put a thought, you certainly thought about what you wrote. So you generated the thought form, but you also wrote it, made it like a standard template. And when I asked you to put it inside the notebook, what is happening there? What I just said, that became a mold, and every day, particles with that desire are generated. Yes, even if you don't even think about it. Look how wonderful. You don't even need to ask daily. I'm doing this for you. You wrote. It's as if you repeat daily what you want. Because there it became a machine for producing particles, which generate the thought form of what you wrote. So that runs the risk of coming faster for you. Of course, my brothers, as I already said here, this is a simplistic way of explaining attraction and reaction. What Sananda calls magnetism. So that you understand exactly what happens. Now, of course there is a lot of involvement around this. For example, you wrote in your notebook that you want to win the lottery, supposedly to have a lot of money, but your higher self internally knows your true reasons, and knows that if you are a person who earns a lot of money, you will harm yourself, because you will have no limit, you will spend more than you earn, you will become a arrogant, arrogant person, that is, you will be attracting a lot of bad things to you. Then your higher self thinks, analyzes whether it is time for you to go through this lesson, not that he won't give you what you want, because probably, this is a lesson you have to go through, learn to deal with a lot of money but is this time? No, no, this is not the time, so skip it. You don't get that. So nothing is that simple. But do you know what you can and cannot receive? You do not know? So take a risk, it doesn't hurt to take a risk, it will happen. So my brothers, moral of the story, closing the subject, be careful with what you emanate, not because you will attract but from the same. If you complain about an illness all day long, you are growing the egregore of illness, and what do you get back? More illness. Try to create in your minds everything I said and you will begin to understand more deeply the things I say. I am not insensitive, I feel the pain of each of you, but you do not have to suffer the suffering of the other, you have to emanate light, you have to emanate to the universe, may the people who are going through this problem now, find peace in their hearts, and may this stabilize, without multiplying. Realize that you have stopped that energy, and the way things are going, I don't even need to comment on what is happening in your country, and it will continue, because you are emanating the same thing. Your media shows this every minute. That's all I can say. I am Archangel Michael. I'm here, trying to teach each one of you, slowly, the path you have to follow.